one of the defining aspects of your approach to Amazon is just being obsessed with making customers happy. I think uh, companies sometimes say that, but Amazon <laughs> is really obsessed with that. I think there's something really profound to that, which is seeing the world through the eyes of the customer, like the customer experience, the Truly. human being that's using the product, that's uh, enjoying the product, they're like what they're, like the subtle little things um, that make up their experience, like how do you optimize those? This is another uh, really good and kind of deep question because there are big things that are really important to manage. And then there are small things in, internally to Amazon. We call them paper cuts. So we have, we're always working on the big things. Like if you ask me, and, the, and most of the energy goes into the big things as it should. So, um, and you can identify the big things. And, and I would encourage anybody, if, if any, you know, anybody listening to this is an entrepreneur, has a small business, whatever, um, you know, think about the things that are not going to change over 10 years. And those are probably the big things. So like I know at, in our retail business at Amazon, 10 years from now, customers are still going to want low prices. Mm. I know they're still going to want fast delivery. And I just know they're still going to want big selection. So it's impossible to imagine a scenario where 10 years from now, I say, where a customer says, I love Amazon. I just wish the prices were a little higher. Or I love Amazon. I just wish you delivered a little more slowly. So when you identify the big things, you can tell they're worth putting energy into because they're stable in time. Okay. But you're asking about something a little different, which is in every customer experience, there are those big things. And by the way, it's astonishingly hard to focus even on just the big things. Mm -hmm. So the, even though they're obvious, they're really hard to focus on. But in addition to that, there are all these little tiny customer experience deficiencies. And we call those paper cuts. And we make long lists of them. And then we have dedicated teams mm -hmm that go fix paper cuts because the teams working on the big issues never get to the paper cuts. They, they never work their way down the list to get to, they're working on big things as they should and as you want them to. Um, and so you need special teams who are charged with fixing paper cuts. Well, where would you put on the, on the paper cut spectrum, the buy now with one click? button, which is, I think, pretty genius. So to me, like, okay, my interaction with things I love on the internet, there's things I do a lot. I may be representing a regular human. Uh, I would love for those things to be frictionless. For example, uh, booking airline tickets, <laughs> just saying. But, it, you know, it's buying a, a thing with one click, making that experience frictionless intuitive, all aspects of that, like that, that just fundamentally makes my life better. Not just in terms of efficiency, in terms of some kind of- Cognitive load. Yeah, cognitive load and peace, inner peace and mm -hmm. happiness. But first of all, buying stuff uh, isn't a pleasant experience. Ha ha having enough money to buy a thing and then buying it is a pleasant experience. And like having pain around that is somehow just you're ruining a, be a beautiful, experience. And I guess all I'm saying as a, as a person who loves good ideas, is that a paper cut, a solution to a paper cut? Yes. So it's probably, that particular thing is probably a solution to a number of paper cuts. So if you go back and look at our order pipeline and how people shopped on Amazon before we invented one-click shopping, mm -hmm. there were a whole series, there was more friction. There was a whole series of paper cuts and that uh, invention eliminated a bunch of paper cuts. And I think you're absolutely right, by the way, that there, when you come up with something like one-click shopping, again, this is like so ingrained in people now, I'm impressed that you even notice it. I mean, most people- Every time I click the button, <laughs> most I just, people just never a surge of happiness. This, there is in, in the perfect invention for the perfect moment in the perfect context, yeah. there is real beauty. Yeah. It is actual beauty and it feels good. It's emotional. It's emotional for the inventor. 
It's emotional for the team that builds it. It's emotional for the customer. It's a big deal. And you can feel those things. But to, to keep coming up with that idea, with those kinds of ideas, I guess is the, the day one thinking effort. Yeah, and you need, you need a big group of people who feel that kind of uh, satisfaction with creating that kind of beauty.